first of all, what is red? So red is nothing else than an objective. It's to reduce carbon emissions through avoided deforestation degradation. So if we keep in mind that there is an objective, then the question is what is the appropriate policy or the national strategy? And that would require that countries go back and look at their national circumstances. So what are the main drivers of deforestation and what then has to be responded to with an adequate policy or measure? And that requires for a mechanism like RED that you have to think about, okay, where I am in this forest transition and what kind of policies would be the adequate ones? What are the right strategies in my specific context? And talking about the capacity to then not only identify, define the right policy or measure, then we have also the capacity problem of implementing it. And here we end up in the bigger red questions and the bigger hopes which were attached to a mechanism like red, which is basically, again, an objective and not something in itself. But what was attached to it was the belief or the hope that a um, bigger transformational change would go along the thread. Beside the fact that we have to identify and design the right policies and strategies, for the implementation, then you have to identify where red shall take place. What are the eligible forests and forest types I want to incorporate in my red scheme? I need to know also who would then eligible for the benefits of such a mechanism. Nowhere in this world we have this kind of detailed regula regulatory framework. So how can we solve the problem of identification of the rights holder? And we need to know that to set up the whole financing mechanism, so that the money which comes from the global level in one way or the other, markets or non-markets fund systems, triggers down through a national, subnational, or maybe subnational level system, which then arrives somewhere where there is a forest and where the rights holders, which are all have to be identified. And this is just the financial architecture of the whole thing. But then we have the whole monitoring, reporting, verifying part of RED, which means the measure pleasure. So if you know what forest you are talking about, then you still have to measure carbon. So who will do that? Is it the people at the ground? Is it a national system? Is it something external, someone external? Often, in most country cases, we are analyzing in our global comparative study, the capacity already at the national level is very low. So you have the problem of measuring the de facto carbon emissions coming out of your identified forest or forested area or peatland. And then, again, this information needs to be reported into something that has a financial executive arm but has to understand, so it needs a technical ear basically. And here in the system, again, you need the capacity to translate very technical, technical information into a financial transaction or action. And there is the next big capacity challenge. If you imagine this whole thing like a clockwork, which should tick, if there is one thing, one little thing which will not work, then the whole system will break down. And the problem is, to make it a clockwork, all these parties, these different elements have to play together. And it becomes quite obvious if you look at the recent developments of strategies in and implementation proposals in countries like Indonesia or in Brazil. You have very, very diverse interests at the national level who then fight about what is the right policy measure and also then negotiate about what are not the right measures, what kind of measures they don't want to see. And a very good example for that is the moratorium in Indonesia, where you could see the outplay of these different diverse interests and different actors. What you see, and that is quite amazing, is a lot of progress in terms of those negotiations I just described, with this multitude of actors also at different levels. For example, in a country like Vietnam, that has introduced a pass regulation, a regulatory frame for payments for environmental services some years ago. This is now the way the Vietnamese government wants to go also and move ahead with a red mechanism. And the government is very central and because the state has the capacity to enforce, they might be able to move ahead with their idea and concept and strategy of a reducing emissions through avoided deforestation degradation mechanism. Other countries like Brazil have faced this kind of political economy challenge. So you have large or huge interests of business actors the ranching community, in another country it might be the soybean producer. So you have to imagine there are claims on land. You have to find in this whole landscape a red space, a space for this red idea. 
You have other countries where progress is very, very slow because those type of countries have maybe more important questions to tackle right now. And I would see based on an analysis we did where we looked at public discourses on this topic red, the country case of Cameroon is quite interesting because there you can see clearly that red doesn't exist in the public. Red is an elite topic and it's negotiated between a number of stakeholders at the national level with a number of stakeholders at the international level. However, there might be other problems much higher on the priority list in policies with the idea of solving problems. The most important thing would be that there is an international framework under which those kind of national country specific strategies, measures can evolve. And that is not only required in terms of the whole measurement part, not only because of getting agreement on what kind of safeguards have to be in place or what are the requirements, but the other thing is the whole market issue or financing issue. Red can be a market, can be a global fund, can be something in between. In the end, it should be a market-based mechanism, a performance-based mechanism, however you establish that then. But to achieve that, again, the international community has made, has to make its agreements and its step forward. And then, beside that, maybe the most important thing is that the international community also has to give space for national sovereignty and ownership over the entire process. Because this is something our findings from our study are showing clearly that progress is slowest where there is limited national ownership. If you have a strong agency for change in a country and a strong constituency that has taken over RED and is creating it how it fits in their country, these are countries that make progress in defining policies and also in first steps towards implementation of those. I think the national community can support RED by avoiding to move it into an overseas development ed project. As my colleagues in Cameroon recently explained to me, they, for them RED could be one of these moments where you turn around very established relationships and it is Cameroon that is helping the developed work world to solve their self-homemade created problems.